McGill. Weekday mornings, 6 until 9, on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Right now, our guest on the live line was introduced and appointed as CEO of the Chicago Public Schools on Monday, April 18th. Jean-Claude Brizard is his name, coming to us from Rockford, Rochester, New York, uh, the superintendent of schools there. We welcome him on a WVON. Welcome to WVON, my friend, and welcome to Chicago. I know you're going to get here and uh, hit the ground running. Uh, how do you uh, and how are you dealing with uh, all the media that you get now? You got a, a story in a newspaper. I know you had not did interviews at first and uh, now everything is coming on. A lot of questions coming at you about your relationship with the uh, teachers union and uh, New York, uh, a little controversy there. And I want to give you an opportunity to explain all of that. But fel- first, welcome to WVON. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Matt. How are you? Absolutely wonderful. I'm, a lot of our listeners are, are curious about the, the no confidence vote. Can you clear that up? I've, I've read about it and I've heard you explain it to uh, some degree, but tell us about it because there's some concern about uh, you coming here and uh, your relationship with the teachers in Rochester. You know, Matt, this is my, my 25th year um, in education. I spent uh, about 21 years working uh, with teachers and in schools in New York City. Uh, never had an issue. Uh, with a teachers' union, or for that matter, any other union in New York, um, and most of them here in, in, in Rochester. I actually have a very good relationship with my teachers here. Um, we've worked together for a very long time. The first year that I was here, we had a f- fantastic close relationship, and we kept talking to teachers in small groups. One of the mistakes that we made was to allow that structure to go away from us. Uh, we were asked not to do that because we're about to enter negotiations with the union. Uh, and, and what happened um, ultimately for the past year and a half is that the messaging became a one-dimensional message, and we didn't get our message out. We didn't talk to teachers often enough, and, and, and this president here um, really was the one communicating and pushing a very different kind of message than the one we were actually pushing. It made us appear to be someone that we are actually are not. I have emails from, from, from hundreds of teachers who don't buy into this. Um, who appreciate the work we're trying to do, who want to work with us, uh, but somehow we allow the internal message with teachers to actually get away from us. Have you had an opportunity to speak with Karen Lewis, the teacher union president here in Chicago? Yes, we talked briefly on the phone. We actually have a face-to-face meeting on Monday uh, in Chicago that I'm looking forward to. Uh, one thing I've asked her to do is to talk to my colleagues back in New York City, uh, Mike Mugru, who heads the New York City chapter of the union, about who I am as a person and, and the fact that I am not anti-teacher. My, my parents were teachers. Uh, my brother's a teacher. My wife was a, t- was a teacher. Uh, I grew up in a family of teachers, and for me to be painted as anti-teacher really has been very disturbing for me. When you took over in Rochester, uh, what were your goals? What did you want to do there? What needed improvement? And what did improve while you were uh, superintendent there? You know, there was a lot of things that had to be looked at when I, when I arrived here in, in, in Rochester. One thing, when you looked at the literacy, the reading levels of kids, it wasn't where it should be. Of course, the system had the lowest graduation rate in New York State at the time. So we knew it was an important piece for the community to talk about how to improve that. And, of course, we've done a lot of work in setting up new schools um, for, for kids, a much, much more in terms of options for parents um, for, for, for their children in the system, but put in place um, a, a number of different kinds of programs that will radically improve graduation rate. We've made tremendous, tremendous progress in a short amount of time uh, because New York State was uh, also increasing the standards for graduation. And, of course, in New York, we measure graduation rate by looking at the four-year cohort graduation. So while the standards are going up, we actually increase the numbers as well. But more importantly, the kids who are getting what we refer to as the coveted regents diploma, the more sort of rigorous diploma in New York, that number has been steadily climbing over the past three years. But, you know, when you look at the community, people tell you what's important to them. Um, As educators, we know about literacy, we know about mathematics, but every city has um, one metric, one thing that they want you to push on. And in Rochester, it was always about graduation rate, and of course, we focus on that squarely. Uh, Safety was another issue that people talked about often here. We, the system had about 17,000 suspensions a year. This is a district with 33,000 kids and about 17,000 suspensions every single year. So we went 
head on with youth crime head on in looking at that, making our schools much safer than they were about three years ago. Have you been able to identify the needs for Chicago public schools right now and and uh, come up with a strategy to uh, attain some goals for Chicago public schools? I know graduation rates were big in Rochester. That's the issue here in Chicago public schools as well. Have you been able to put your finger on what is needed to improve graduation rates here and uh, other issues that are important to uh, Chicago public schools? You know, like one, one of the things we've been doing for the past uh, couple of weeks is actually digging into the data looking at the ACT, looking at the graduation rate, looking at the college persistence rate, looking at the kinds of schools that have been created under Arnie, under Ron, under even go back as far as Paul Vallis, um, looking what's been, at what's been done, how it's been implemented, and its success does, um, to date. So what we hope to do, aside from looking at the data, is to sit and talk to a lot of people, uh, especially the kids who live in the system every single day, and hear from them and from their parents as to what their frustrations are and what they want to see us do. Now, of course, we, we can talk about graduation rate because that's been in the news and been uh, at, the, at the front of the conversation. Uh, one thing I've not heard enough of um, is the college persistence rate in, in Chicago. Looking at literacy, we see some issues there as well, too. But uh, we don't want to get specific until we have a chance to really finish going through the data. And I don't mean the aggregate. We're talking about looking at black males, looking at Latinos, looking at uh, what is happening to different groups of kids in the system. Because, you know, it's easy to say that you have, say, 70% of the kids are passing the reading test. But if you dig deeper and you see that black male is an issue, or you look at uh, kids who are immigrants who are not doing so, uh, faring so well, you want to get beyond the numbers and see exactly what is happening behind that. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, and on Friday, we have a, a three, four-hour meeting with a team to begin to, uh, to continue to, uh, to unpack those numbers. But more importantly, I want to sit with parents, I want to sit with teachers, I want to sit with principals, I want to sit with kids and talk to them about what they see are issues, um, what they've been struggling with, what they've had success with. So to craft a plan, that would make a lot of sense. And, and of course, the mayor likes to be very clear as to what he's looking for. Um, and, 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 and I think there'll be a lot of synergy between what we hear and what he's been talking about. You know, the, high, the issue of high schools in uh, the Chicago Public School is a serious issue. Attendance rates, of course, dropout rates. I was watching uh, Dr. Oz yesterday, believe it or not, and he mentioned Robeson High School and how one of seven young ladies who attends Robeson High School here is either pregnant or has already uh, had a child. So uh, high schools are an area uh, that, that I'm sure you've got to focus on, uh, and, and especially at Robeson. I mean, that, for that to be a national story, um, uh, have you thought about that? Is there any way that you can have an impact on uh, coming up with a strategy to uh, focus on high schools and because you talked about college and getting kids into college seems like elementary schools is one thing here in chicago but in high schools getting kids to stay in school for uh, four years has always been a challenge i mean i think you look around at some schools and you can say this is the freshman class this is how many students started out and then compare that with how many students actually graduate and that number drops down tremendously. You've got certain, certain high schools that do well. We know the, the good high schools in, in Chicago, but uh, there is this issue of making all high schools, the neighborhood high schools, just as good as the Whitney Youngs and, and the Paytons and, and uh, other schools that are standout schools in, in Chicago public school system. But you know, I, I spent uh, nearly 20 years in high schools in New York City, and, and, and I can tell you that the issue is one that's pervasive across, across the country. Um, um, the Bath Funds at the John Hopkins University did an amazing study looking at high schools and looking at freshman classes and senior classes. And, and you saw, on average, about a two third drop between the first and the fourth year. So the dropout rate in, in, across the country in our cities is much higher than, than, than what we're talking about. And of course, people don't talk about the eighth grade dropout situation. The one thing we know about high schools, though, is that it doesn't happen, it doesn't begin to happen in ninth grade, it begins to happen before that. Middle school, um, um, sixth, seventh, eighth grade are big issues in our country. Um, some call it the black hole of American education. And, and we have to find a way to make sure kids are, are prepared when they come to high school. Second piece, of course, is that once they get there, we can't have them dropping out. And for some of our schools, our dropout, dropout factories. So kids come in prepared, and of course, they, they, they become dropout. So you talked about teen pregnancy. Of course, there's a great co correlation to what you find around girls getting pregnant, the kinds of risky behaviors that you often see that young people get involved in, uh, and, and of course, their academic achievement. 
seldom do you find a young lady with a high uh, a literacy or math score doing really, really well in school getting pregnant. Those tend to be the outliers and not the, the norm. So one of the ways to target that, aside from, of course, good education around uh, prevention, good health care conversations that you have in, in, in curriculum in classrooms, but to make sure that the self-esteem of the young ladies remain high. Mm-hmm. One of the schools I've been very proud of um, um, in, in New York is a school called the Young Women's Leadership um, School of Harlem. I know there is a replica charter school in, in Chicago, um, but the flagship school in East Harlem was created because the founder of the network saw young women getting pregnant uh, on a regular basis and, and knew that she had to do something about that. And what she's created is a school that has, that has had a 97% graduation rate over the, past, over the past 10 years, 100% going to college for over a decade. When, when you look at what she does around college uh, going rate, uh, um, uh, around counseling, around curriculum, uh, around self-esteem, she's been able to do really well in preventing the kinds of issues that you see around teen pregnancy. But it, it's a combination of act factors, right? It, 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 it's the, the self-esteem, it's the education around how to protect yourself when you're having sex. Um, uh, of course, you want abstinence to be the primary message that you send to kids, of course. Uh, but more importantly, it goes back to self-esteem and academic achievement. You get that going, um, you're going to begin to help kids begin to prevent uh, the epidemic that you're finding um, across um, across cities in America. Here in Rochester, uh, one of my early indicators, my early data points, so looking at the STD rates, the sexual transmitted disease rates in the city, and what I found was that it was alarming. Uh, and of course, we partnered with the healthcare agencies here. Um, if you've been watching the news, the last thing that has been being pushed by some community members is the, is the uh, something called condom availability. So this is something that we're not pushing as a school district, but certainly it's being pushed by the healthcare industry here in, in Rochester. But it's an all of the above conversation that has to be put in play around education, around self-esteem, around uh, avoiding risky behaviors. Um, once you do that, you're going to find graduation rate uh, increasing with those kinds of young young women, and the pregnancy rates begin to drop as well. Another issue I wanted to talk to you uh, uh, just briefly about is uh, closing schools. How do you uh, line up on closing schools for uh, academic performance or, 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 lack there, or lack thereof? Sure, absolutely. You know, that, that has created quite a bit of angst um, uh, in cities across the country as well, too. And one of the things that we learned um, to my, in my experience here in Rochester and in New York City is that you've got to do, you have to do the requisite community engagement. People need to understand what we're doing. Too often, you know, you get these educrats who come from downtown who come in and just shut people's schools down. And, of course, you create a lot of, 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 of problems in communities. Schools are communities. They belong to communities. Uh, people have to to be engaged. We're talking about parents, kids, elected officials, etc. There's, there's got to be that kind of work done, done around that. that that's, that's primary. Second, of course, when you're looking at a school, you have to take a look at a progression of results over many, over many years. You don't look at a single data point. You've got to look at three, four years of data to see the kinds of trends that you're seeing in the school. Is it improving? Is it not improving? What is going on? Did the system itself have a play, a place in destroying that school? Because too often, what we do in, 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 in large districts is that we put a lot of special needs kids in one place. Mm-hmm. And of course, we know that if you have a large high school with a lot of kids who are special needs, it's a recipe for disaster. That school is never going to get better. So it's important that you look at the factors involved in the school's failure. And of course, you do the right kinds of engagement to make sure you engage the communities in talking about what needs to be done. It, it's a tricky uh, um, uh, issue. It's yeah. one, of course, that we have to do at times, but it's an important one to make sure that community is involved in the, in the yeah. Big, big issue here because a, a lot of people, like I said, are, they're focusing on the, the good schools. We have the good standout high schools, and, and you hear people just say we want our neighborhood school, our neighborhood school, to be just as good as a Whitney Young, just as good as a Peyton. And, uh, and I think that is one of the challenges. Ray, I know you have a question. Yeah, hey, Mr. Brizard, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. Um, one of the issues, I, I think a lot of people are really hopeful that you can make a difference here in Chicago, and they look at you kind of like a doctor. And I want to ask you to put kind of like a stethoscope on and tell us what do you see when you're looking at the Chicago public school system? What, what's our health? I mean, what, what kind of condition are we in? Do you see a patient that is in real bad need, or do you see somebody that can come out of it? Uh, what do you see when you look at us with a 
We have almost a billion dollar budget deficit. What do you see? You know, it's it's a it's a, it's a big question, um, and I guess to to respond to it um, I mean, rather quickly, you know, it's certainly not a patient that cannot recover. One that's 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 not doing the way, as well as we wanted to to actually do. Um, one that has taken some medication and, and perhaps some parts of the body is doing okay, some parts not doing well. Uh, you have to take a look at the entire patient in, in, its, in its totality and, and see where in the system or where within the body that, that starts functioning well. If the heart is doing well but, but the lungs are not doing so well, you know, it may be because we have not provided the kinds of equity, the kinds of support that some parts of the body actually needs. So you have a patient that can recover, that part of it has done well and has recovered. You've got you've had several doctors try to, to treat the entire patient as well, and I've, I've done well in certain parts, and other parts have not done 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 so well. Are we so in the emergency is, room? <laughs> um, I think I think it's um, some part of it. Yes, belongs in the emergency room. So it's it's hard to say the entire patient is in the emergency room because again, you got schools doing really well, you got schools not doing so well. Some parts of the body do well, some parts not doing so well. I think there's, there's a need to step back, maybe about a foot. And, and for us to reanalyze the patient and see how we can look at all the reforms that's been done um, to make sure that it's being done well in, in, in targeting the exact issues that we know uh, uh, need to be addressed to actually make the patient whole. Um, so that's what we intend to do in the first few weeks, just take one step back and for all of us to talk about the patient and say, okay, what do we do now to move this? Of course, leaning on what we know works. One other question I had, real, Mr. Brizard. Go ahead, real quick. Um, the media, do you think you've... A lot of people are always kind of shocked at the attention they get from the Chicago media. We're, we're, how do you view the way they've been covering you? Yeah, you got a you got a nice little spread in today's uh, Sun Times. <laughs> well, you know, save me a copy. I'd love to see it. <laughs> Fan, um, got family I photos and save everything. Save you a copy. Wait, we got wow. we, we've got you in your your uh, graduation uh, outfit here from <laughs> high school. And... That was that was middle school graduation. Oh, was it okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you wearing your armor coming into Chicago? I uh, know you got to be ready, right? <laughs> no, you know. I, I worked in New York City for over tw- for over two decades. Right. Um, in the, the media is different. Um, in New York is in Chicago. Uh, one I was quite used to in New York City. Um, so you know, it is what it is. People uh, have a passion around education, around schools. They, they, they care about who's leading the school system. Uh, they care about what's going on. The one thing I'll ask, though, uh, if I may, is that you know all of us have to get into this into this fight to actually improve schools. Uh, it can't be done by one person. So we need everyone to put their hands in roll their sleeves and come work with us and actually make it better. We, we would like to have you on WVON, you know, as often as possible. What we've had before is a monthly conversation, and we extend that invitation to you. I'd, I'd, love, to, I'd love to be there. All right. Sounds good. That's how we, you know, as you say, it has to be a, a total effort, and, uh, of course, we're going to do our part here at WVON. Jean-Claude Brizard, congratulations. We'll see you in May, my friend. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Have and a good day. All- Matt McGill, weekday mornings, 6 until 9, on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON.